Aim training. Hands aim trains, ACO aim trains, his Watson is banned, even Optimum Tech, a tech reviewer, has 352 hours on Kovacs. But why do this? I mean, at the end of the day, you're just shooting fake circular targets. You're gonna have to go into the actual game to practice anyways. So why double the work? Here's what Voltaic, a professional aim training team, has to say about this. Aim trainers help with mouse control and learning good aiming drills to help you execute them properly in-game. And it works! Just look at the improvement hundreds of players made by aim training. Clearly, if I want to have a pure aimbot like Capra, I'm gonna need more than just playing the game. Then there's already a problem. I don't play on a mouse. I play on controller. I've been playing FPS games since 2016. Last year, I picked up Apex Legends and I fell in love with it. But one thing plagues Apex's MNK player base. Aim assist. 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 One finger. One finger aim. I don't think they should be in the same competitive environment. It should not be in game. So I bought one for the first time ever in my life. It's been a month since then. And although I'm still not very good at it, I'm ready to take my aim to the next level. So for the next 30 days, I'll be aim training on Kovacs with a controller. First things first, we need to establish my skill level. Here are some of my best moments before starting Kovacs. Over the next 30 days, I expect to see an increase in my long-range damage output, target acquisition, and one-clip consistency. I'm also very interested to see if these 30 days will turn me into my literal goal, Jim Burton. I began by mapping my controller joystick inputs to relative mouse movement inputs on Steam, opting for a lower sensitivity. To assess my skill level, I completed Voltaic's Novice Benchmark playlist. The day one results were clear. My joystick control without aim assist was awful. So instead of finishing all of my benchmarks in one day, I decided to grind each one of them out over the next 7 days, using my day 7 high scores as comparison for day 30. Here are my day 7 results. Voltaic's benchmark categorizes aiming into three main categories, clicking, tracking, and target switching. Based on my current scores, I averaged 186 energy and have achieved a formidable IRON RANK! Truthfully, I had hoped for at least bronze, seeing that I've placed gold in 4 scenarios, but there are also 4 scenarios that I don't even have a rank for. The first 7 days proved to be rewarding. At least now I know where my strengths and weaknesses lie, and what to focus on moving forward. But, to be honest, I haven't been practicing my weaker scenarios as much as I should have been. I neglected them because I was afraid of seeing my own low scores. This is clearly not an improvement mindset and I've gotta do something to change that. I made two changes going forward. First, I held myself accountable to play as much clicking and target switching scenarios as my tracking ones. Second, I upped my sensitivity by 50%. This way, although it becomes much harder to do micro adjustments, it also means that the time it takes for me to flick from target to target becomes much faster. This increases the skill ceiling and makes my improvement much easier. So the routine that I built. I stretch my hands thoroughly to warm them up and prevent injuries. I hop onto Kovacs and do 15 minutes of smooth tracking scenarios. Then I drink some water. I practice close range reactive tracking for 20 minutes. Then I drink more water. Then 20 minutes of dynamic clicking, water, 20 minutes of target switching, more water. Stay hydrated. Afterwards, I hop onto Apex and play a normal session out and enjoy the rest of my day. Then I repeat. I was not very good at stopping my sessions on time. I've been on Kovacs for the past 4 hours just trying to hit a high score in smooth ball. I probably shouldn't be doing this because now my hand just hurts. Alright, so 5 hours in Kovacs today and my eyes are just completely dead. 
Yeah, it's already 10 p.m. and I've only been playing Kovacs. I'm not gonna get to play Apex like this. The aim training is doing miracles, like, don't get me wrong. I've been just beaming people more and more every single day, but now it gets to a point where I can't even open my eyes to play the game. So then what's what's the whole point of all of this? Like, man, I'm really about to just fall asleep with these eyes. They're small enough already. The more I got into the challenge, the more I care about improving over hitting high scores, which made me spend less time doing pointless Kovacs grinds and gave me more time to enjoy Apex. But this was not the only problem. The next problem. Well, I injured my wrist and got tendonitis. But how? So in 2020, I went on a road biking trip with my family in Taiwan. While going downhill on a mountain, I saw a car approaching quickly from the other side of the road and I pulled the brakes while trying to avoid crashing into the car. And... I flew off the bike and landed right wrist first. I broke a bone and it never fully recovered. Since then, my right wrist was always super prone to getting tendonitis whenever I do something intensive. At this point, I don't know what specifically has triggered it. Maybe I was playing too much Kovacs without taking enough break. Maybe my sensitivity was too high and so I pressed in my joystick too hard. Or maybe it was just bound to happen by the nature of this challenge. You know, I probably shouldn't even have started this challenge. But then I remembered my purpose. It will turn me into my literal gold chamber. In all seriousness, I took a break from aim training for 3 weeks to get treated and recover from my tendonitis. I don't think a break will make me perform worse, but moving on, I scaled down on the intensity of my practice sessions to make sure I was not doing more than what was scheduled. There are 10 days left to this challenge, I can already see myself improving greatly, and I want to finish it strong. So, let's do this! All right, so the last day of doing this challenge, also the benchmark day. I'm nervous because I haven't touched these benchmark scenarios since day seven, and I want to know if I've made any significant improvements on any of them. But there's only one way to find out. Here's my old day 7 benchmark results, and here is my day 30 results. And here is a graph I made to show my improvement per category. So is it worth it? Of course! As a player completely new to controller, these improvements were massive and I could feel it every game I played. My long range damage output has definitely increased, and my target acquisition is just so much quicker. But here's the million dollar question. Did I become Jim Burton? Well, no. But that doesn't matter. I used to constantly feel like going back to MNK whenever I played, but not anymore. I'm still not amazing at controller, but now I feel that I have the skills necessary to improve by just being exposed to different situations more often. Do I recommend it? Hell yeah! No matter if you're a controller beginner, like me, or if you've already been playing with it as your main input for a while, I believe that everyone can benefit from aim training. Think of it as a skill multiplier. Your current skill level will get massively increased just by aim training. Try it out! All right, all right. Enough said. Roll the clips. I'm gonna die. Yeah. Keep it. Uh, I have no shield. That's one. That's two. On me. Low, low, low. Punch the last one. Low. Has no ammo. I'm 